I feel like, oh, I'm just being lazy, I should be able to do this. But when I do make myself and force myself past my limit, it gets so much worse. Dear Diary, so I dropped the first episode of this podcast and then vanished off the face of the earth. And while I do actually have legitimate reasons for that, the fact remains it has been almost impossible for me to get anything done lately. So it seemed like a good time to talk about the joys of executive dysfunction. <laughs> uh, that being said, if you saw this thumbnail and title and, um, or I guess just title if you're coming from Spotify, um, but if you saw it and were like, ooh, great, a guide to overcome this, that's not what I have here. I would love a guide to overcome this too. I'm just commiserating, honestly. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about what I'm hoping will eventually help it. But, um, yeah, this is not a guide. I apologize. I wish it was. Uh, <laughs> but if you see me keep looking down, my notes are down here because I've made bullet points of what to talk about. Um, because otherwise I will not be able, my bra my brain's not working. Clearly. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, and here's the moments where I wish that I edited podcast episodes as much as I do my normal videos, but that's the point of a podcast. It's not as well edited. This is not my bullet points. This is just a rabbit trail I'm going on. And this is why I have bullet points. Okay, back on track. Last year, I reached kind of a new level of executive dysfunction for me. Um, I always kind of struggled with, um, like, procrastination and what I'm realizing now is uh, just some like demand avoidance stuff um, where just anytime I feel any kind of pressure on me I'm just like <laughs> if you're not watching I just like crumbled because um, <laughs> that is that is what it feels like when I have feel any kind of weight of expectations on me and it makes me not want to do anything um, and I've always kind of struggled with that, but I've just pushed through it. I've been like, okay, no, this needs to get done. I'll do it. And yeah, I might procrastinate to the last possible minute, but um, that motivates me. So it works. Lately, that has not been working as well. And I've been feeling, honestly, um, a lot of shame because I'm like, I used to be able to power through and do these things, and now I can't, and so I've, um, yeah, felt a lot of guilt and shame regarding that, which then, of course, only spirals it, because then I start beating myself up and feeling bad, and then because of that, you know, I feel worse, obviously, and that then I have even less motivation because I'm like all down in the dumps and then it's just like an endless cycle. Um, so beating myself up over it is not helping. Um, but from the many hours I have spent online researching autism, I have seen that it's um, actually pretty common to once you get your diagnosis to start, um, what I've seen it said as a lot is feeling more autistic where um, suddenly those autistic traits seem to be more so in you and um, you struggle more to do things that used to come a lot easier. Um, and I'm really glad I saw this because <laughs> my imposter syndrome was going off the charts for a little bit where I'm like, am I like amplifying these traits to get this diagnosis? Like, am, is it like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy kind of thing? Um, I'm not even sure if that's the right comparison, but that's, but like, am I faking it because I think I'm autistic, so I'm now acting autistic, but, and it was just, uh, again, vicious cycle, vicious cycle, um, but that's 
actually apparently very common and from my totally inexpert, non-medical um, licensed perspective, just based on the things that I've read and consumed, this is my understanding of it is um, that it's kind of a couple of different things that cause this, um, where some of it is that, um, mind blank, mine just went blank, this is why I have bullet points. Okay, so part of it, <laughs> part of it is um, skill regression. That is one thing that I saw about it where, um, Basically, we are relearning ourselves and our mind just kind of bloop, resets. And so we have to relearn things, um, relearn how to do things. And this is also um, something that happens with trauma, where once you start healing from trauma, you heal a part of yourself and that kind of removes that I'm not describing this well at all, but kind of removes that part of yourself. But no, okay, hang on. Here's a better way to explain it. I apologize. This this podcast episode is all over the place. Um, but it is like um, one of the examples I saw was. Um, the person was talking about the skills they use for their job, but they developed those skills um, to the point that they did a lot because they um, were afraid of disappointing people. So they always pushed themselves. And once they started working on themselves and healing themselves and um, were doing things for their own instead of um, doing it for external reasons, um, suddenly they found a harder, they found it more difficult to do the things they need to do for their job. So they basically had to rewire their brain in order to find reasons to do it for them instead of external reasons. And it's forming new neural pathways and relearning traits based on um, healthy pathways instead of unhealthy pathways. Probably explained that terribly, but that is one of the reasons. And another, another one of the reasons that is a lot simpler to explain is um, for us late diagnosed peeps, uh, that was cringe, uh, <laughs> for us who are late diagnosed, um, we more than likely, um, I, I'm just going to start stop saying we, start saying I, because this is my experience here. Um, I spent my entire life masking. Um, and that mask runs deep. It's not just in how I present myself to like everyone around me. It's also been in how I present myself to myself. I've been masking behaviors from myself because like I felt like it was wrong. I felt like it was shameful. So uh, I was like, no, I need to act this way. So um, I even been masking for myself where now I'm in this whole, this is going to be another episode where I talk about rediscovering myself and learning who I actually am because I feel like I've been lying to myself my entire life. But a part of that is, um, like I said before, where when I struggled to do something, I would push myself through it. And that was kind of a form of masking to an extent of, um, oh, I shouldn't have to struggle with this. I shouldn't be struggling with this. There's no reason to struggle with this. So I'm just going to boom, power through, push on. And I kept doing that and kept doing that for the first 27, 28 years of my life. Um, and that's exhausting. That is very exhausting to do. Um, so now that I am trying to take that mask down, that mask that kept me powering through all through life, I'm crashing. And don't get me wrong, it's a good thing I'm taking that mask down because um, it'd be a lot worse if I kept powering through until like my whole body just went, I can't do this anymore. But as it is, I'm finally taking that mask down and um, I'm crashing to a lesser degree of what it could have been if I didn't do this. I had a conversation with my husband earlier on in 
this whole discovering an autistic journey. And um, it, I can't remember the context of it exactly. It was probably something about going to something where there's going to be people or something along those lines of doing more social interactions than like one a week. <laughs> um, and um, he, from a place of completely no judgment, just trying to understand because Stephen is a saint and is so patient with me, um, he was just like, why is this so hard for you when this is something that you were able to do so easily before? And what he didn't know is that's something I've been asking myself in like a constant loop in my mind with basically everything <laughs> where I'm like, why is this so hard? Why? <laughs> because it was a new experience for me where I was actually letting myself feel um, what my body was feeling and was actually paying attention to those signals. And I was like, why is this so hard all of a sudden? <laughs> Apparently because I've been blocking it out all my life. And also there is the factor of um, I have done a lot of healing. So I am having to rewire some connections in my brain. Okay, I'm going to pull this, pull up my phone to actually read this that I wrote. Because I'm actually pretty proud of this metaphor. <laughs> um, so I felt, I was like, this should not be this hard. Um, but it felt like um, I would hit a wall. And the best way I could think to explain this feeling is like the doorway to this task was closed and it suddenly changed from a push door to a pool door, but my hands are tied. So I just keep throwing myself against the door, hoping it will open, but all I'm achieving is just beating myself up as I continually ram myself into a pool door trying to push it open. Um, and that is very embarrassing to imagine, but it feels embarrassing that it's this difficult for me. Um, I, j I feel like a failure a good portion of the time. Um, before my diagnosis, burnout was a word that I was familiar with but only in the context of like someone who has been working really hard at their job for like 15 years and um, they've just given their all to their job and are starting to get burnt out on what they're doing. That was the only context I knew it. Um, <laughs> but this is so much more all-encompassing. Um, it affects literally every aspect of my life and has definitely made me um, recontextualize the word burnouts in my mind. It's like I need to have so much more downtime right now. I hate it because uh, I'll have like one really productive day and feel really good about myself for having a productive day. And then the next like, three, four days, I am just so exhausted, I can hardly do anything. And I just need so much more downtime than I feel like I should need. And, um, and I'm an extrovert. And I sometimes can't go to social things because it's just too much for me. I get overstimulated and then sometimes I'm just too mentally exhausted to force myself to socially interact with people. And then again, I keep talking about these looping cycles, but here's another one where I'm an extrovert. I get my energy from interacting with people, but when I'm so burned out, I cannot make myself interact with people. I'm not getting that energy. And then I am just starving myself. <laughs> And it's like a lot of times it's almost physically impossible for me to get out of bed in the morning, which feels ridiculous. Basic self-care is terrible. Taking a shower feels like pulling teeth. And it is embarrassing how many days I just 
sit on the couch and feel like I can't do anything. I'm saying all this and putting this out there on the internet, I am so... Like, I'm already ashamed of all this stuff and then putting it out there, I'm just like... <sighs> I feel terrible for this. I feel guilty. I feel like, oh, I'm just being lazy. I should be able to do this. But when I do make myself and force myself past my limit, it gets so much worse. I can't be the only one that's experiencing this. I hope I'm not the only one. It feels like I am. It feels like surely I'm the only one that's this big of a failure. But surely I'm not. So that's why I'm putting this out there because it's sometimes just good to know that you aren't alone. So I hope, I mean, I don't hope, I, I don't want anyone to relate to this. I don't want anyone else to feel this way, but <laughs> um, if you do, I want you to know that you're not alone. I guess is the thing. And then there's also the the very selfish part of me does hope that someone's gonna be like, oh yeah, I deal with this. And I'm sorry if that's you. I feel bad for hoping for that because you know, it, it, it sucks, but it is nice to know that you're not alone. So <sighs> I'm hoping, but I'm not hoping. And I hope that makes sense. And I'm gonna stop saying the word hope. <laughs> I've been trying to climb out of this hole for several months now, but it feels like every time I try, my brain is working against me. <laughs> um, or I guess more specifically, the two sides of my brain, the ADHD side and the autism side, are battling each other, where I'm like, ooh, I know, I'm going to follow a nice, routine in the mornings that will help me and I'll stick to this routine and it'll be great and my ADHD says I'm bored of this after a week I need some novelty here and so then I go okay um I'm going to try a more free form flow thing and just like be like okay here are the things that need to be done but I'm not going to confine myself to this has to be done at this time this has to be done at this time and then my autism's like you you didn't give me an actual routine I'm not doing it <laughs> and it's like the only thing I can ever like get done is when my ADHD decides to hyper focus on one of my special interests but then that just leads to me spending eight hours plotting the lore of five nights and fret <laughs> plotting the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's and not actually getting anything productive done. Uh, depending on your definition of productive, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's just, I'm constantly fighting with my mind and I am so, so exhausted right now. And don't get me wrong, there are things I love about being autistic and ADHD, but staring down this dark abyss of burnout it's hard to see anything but the negatives. And it's like, oh yeah, this is a disability. Thankfully, I've gotten a new therapist. Nothing against my old therapist. She was great, but she was a neurotypical therapist who had never worked with autistic people before. So, um, she was great with trauma processing, but once we got past that, it really, I needed to change. So I found someone who specializes in autism and ADHD, and actually she is ADHD herself. Um, and she's been working with me in, um, building what she's referring to as a menu of like things to do during the day depending on how much energy I have. Um, it's kind of a extension of spoon theory which if you aren't familiar with it it's like 
you only have um, so many spoons in the drawer. Um, I'm going to totally butcher this. I'm terrible at explaining these kinds of things. Um, but there's only so many spoons in the drawer and um, each task you do takes a certain number of spoons and it the tasks take different spoons depending on the person, depending on the day. Like there's many things that can affect how many spoons something can take. But um, just because taking a shower for you costs one spoon doesn't mean it doesn't cost three spoons for me. Um, but yeah, so you only have so many spoons in your drawer and when you run out, you're out. You can't do anymore. You've hit that wall. Um, so we like went through all my household stuff and, um, assigned one through five, um, for the number of spoons different things would take. Um, so that way on like low energy days, I can look at the menu and be like, well, um, Picking up a couple things in the living room only takes one spoon. I can do that. And that way I don't have the guilt and the shame of doing nothing. So I don't get into that cycle. And I'm still able to do something and that feels nice. And then um, when I'm looking at things I'm like, oh my, I have... I haven't done this. It's like, well, yeah, that costs me four spoons to do. So I'm waiting for a day that I have four spoons in the drawer so that I can do this task. And once I do, I will do it. Um, so I'm really hopeful that that will help. We literally just set this up. So I don't know yet, but I am very hopeful for it. Um, I've also uh, restructured my work days where I have different tasks for high energy, mid energy, and low energy. Um, so depending on, like, I have certain, I need to record a video each week, a short each week, I need to get graphics done each week. Uh, like, there's certain things I need to do each week, um, but they all take different levels of energy. So I've, like, labeled them how much energy they take. So I can just look at that and don't have to spend extra energy figuring out what I have the energy to do is one of the important things about this. Um, I can just be like, oh, it's a low energy day. What can I do? Oh, I can work on some graphics. Cool. Um, <laughs> and so I'm hopeful that will work. Um, I, if this does work, I'm going to probably just transition basically everything in my life to this energy scale. So I'm sorry if this episode was mostly just me complaining and was a little um, depressing. <laughs> um, but this is just what I'm dealing with right now. And since there was like a, I was so excited to start this podcast, I got the first episode and then everything hit the fan. And I, um, I'm hopeful I'm now going to be able to do the once a month for this podcast, once a week videos on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm hoping that this new energy system will allow me to do that. Um, but it, it just seems like something I need to talk about today considering I drop the podcast and then vanish off the face of the earth. <laughs> and like I said, I both hope and I'm hopeful that it's not the case that someone <laughs> someone um, relates to this and feels not alone. This is Bree signing off. Remember to be kind to yourself.